G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now, a few years back, I got into schleppers in a big way. And, and schleppers are, well, they're not quite a tank and they're not quite a boat. They're sort of in between. And I mean, I love my boats. I love my ships. I love my sailing ships. So to combine that with tanks, because I really do enjoy doing armour, I mean, I, I love making tracks. <laughs> and this thing, well, it's got a big smiley mouth and it was so much fun to build. And even these little bumper things here, I made those out of cotton. She hand made them. There's a whole series of videos on that. So um, there'll be a link at the end of this and um, you could click on that and see how I built my schlepper. It won first prize on the um, January competitions a few years back at my model club. Everyone was just like, wow. So um, yeah, a lot of fun doing the camo, a lot of fun. The fact that it's a ship and a boat and a tank and uh, you know, it's, it's everything. It's wonderful. Now, I got so much into this whole schlepper thing that um, I got into the little Japanese ones. Now, there is a much larger one than this. <laughs> this is 170 second scale rich katsu, right? Uh, sounds like cat soup, but it's K-A-T-S-U. Katsu, right? So, you know, that's what it is. Uh, this thing is tiny. I mean, look at my hand. It's just absolutely, absolutely minuscule. I've got my hobby knife over here. Right? My hobby knife is pretty well the same size, if not longer than it. I mean, it's just ridiculous. It is such a tiny little thing. But I had a 135th scale dragon one of this, and I did a complete review of that kit. But that kit was missing the torpedoes and the machine guns and possibly a few other little things. And that kit had a few problems. Start it was in a giant box, which was absolutely absurd. A few other things. Go, go back and watch that video. I'll put a link as well to that so that you can see what I did then. After a year of waiting since I ordered it, finally, this um, Dragon, the recent release of the Cats arrived. And look, this is the one with torpedoes, machine guns, everything. Well, everything except that nice camo scheme that you get on the Rich Kit. And if you haven't seen that, here's a pic from the Rich Kit, which I own, so I can show that pic. <laughs> and it was always my intention to paint this up in the four color camo and have it with torpedoes and everything and that's what I was going to do to the previous model but someone offered me a good price for that other one I thought well what the heck I'll order this when it comes out but it's taken a year to turn up anyway let's have a look in this box and see what's changed see if there's anything new. well there's obviously torpedoes and there's obviously machine guns but let's see if dragons improve this kit at all I'd also like to compare it to the, um, the Rich Katsu. I mean, do you get more bang for your buck with the Dragon Kit War? Splash for your splash. The Rich Kit, although it's 172nd, is really detailed and it's a beautiful little kit. So, has Dragon given us more to play with? Don't know. Let's find out. Roll the music. <laughs> Right, the cat soup. Bass got very upset, Bass my cat, because she thinks this is going to be dinner, cat soup. But no, katsu. Yes, that's um, probably how you should say it. Who knows? Who knows? If you can speak Nepponese, let me know and you can tell me what the exact pronunciation is. All right, well, what do you get in the box? What do you get for your money? Oh, well, first you've got to fight your way in the box. It's a very tight box. This one has never been opened. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I, I only re only received this about a week ago. Um, Paul got it for me from um, the Last Stand Hobbies. Yeah, good day, Paul, if you're watching. He's a lovely guy. Now, that's um, pretty well the same sprue we got last time. I'll have a look at those in a sec. I'm just seeing what's different. The um, the wheels, yeah, the wheels are basically off the Kami, uh, which is a kit I've also got. So um, they're basically the Kami, which is a Type 2, I think. Um, yeah, it says on there anyway, type 2. Yeah, type 2 is the, the katsu is type 4. So sometimes people refer to them, like Alan at the club, who's right into all this Japanese stuff, he um, he refers to them, oh, you're building the type 4, building the type 2. I mean, I prefer all the funny names. Katsu! Kami! <laughs> but that's me. I like making funny sounds. Just a sort of funny guy. Some would say silly, but anyhow. 
You get the same sprue with the soldiers, which I believe are American, not Japanese, I thought last time. But there you go. You could probably still um, mess them up. Uh, US Marines. I mean, it says so on the bloody sprue here. Should have read that last time. US Marines, Guadalcanal, 1942. So, um, yes. Not Japanese. No. American. Right. There you go. Okay. Uh, identical sprue to last time as well. So nothing's changed there. Um, I went through all of that in the last one about the um, the various parts here. It's lovely. It's, it's really nice. It's beautifully done kit. Ah, we got these horrible things again. Yep. These are the bane of my existence. I obviously hate them. And you're going to need two. Uh, but um, you have to chop 20 links off. So it's not an exact join. So you can't use the, the joiners. You can, you can do it once. But then the other join is going to be some sort of butt join. Which these things do not lend themselves to at all. If you do manage to get it on, that's great. And uh, after a couple of years in the Australian heat, they will just curl up, deteriorate, snap everywhere and fall off. Rubbish. I already have a solution for that. I already came well prepared because I planned years ahead. Years in the making. I have the Kami tracks, which are identical. Because basically it's the same wheel, same thing, except you need you know, a lot more. And in this box, getting a fight way into this box, oh, I have three sets. Because I have the Kami, well I've got a set for the Kami. And then Alan said... Oh, I've got some leftover Kami track links. Would you like them? And it turned out some were already made up. So there's a full set for a Kami tank, right? Basically two runs already done, already burnished, already to go. But not only that, he found all these loose links, which is enough to make up the extras that you're going to need. So I'll actually have enough track links in there to do the, the double run for the Katsu. So that's good. And these are metal. Uh, so they'll have a nice weight to them. They'll stop this thing from floating away. <laughs> so that's a solution to that problem. If you had to pay for it, well, a set of those links is probably, you know, four to five shekels in my money. Okay, shekel conversion chart. All right, and at current exchange rates, which are all over the place because of the, the vile rust and the general, you know, plague that's happening all over the world. But anyhow, a lot of money, basically... Um, you would spend, if you bought metal track links for this, more than the price of the kit. So you have to decide, is that worth it to you? Or would you just go, help, I'll do the, you know, I'll put the dragon shit on. <laughs> dragon, sorry, dragon tracks, dra dragon, whatever, DS. Yes, no, DS, dragon shit. Now, now, oh, this is all new. This is new. This is a new sprue. We did not have this one last time. And that is because it is torpedoes. And I don't know what's happening with the torpedoes. They're all twisted and squirmy and we'll get them out of the bag shortly. And we've got all the brackets. Yes, we have all the brackets. So that's brackets to the hull, which is good. And I don't have to worry about building that. We have the machine guns. They're quite nice, actually. They're quite nice. So there we go. We've got all those. So look, we've got all the things that were missing last time, which you really need to make this more interesting. Oh, what's this? Okay, so we have the wire. Yep. We've got... Um, We've got a few little things there. I think that, oh, that's the camera again, if you want to do the guys sort of photographing it. We'll open that up. There's obviously some goodies in there. We'll have a look at that shortly. This hasn't changed. This is the, um, the hull and the deck. Same as last time. They're pretty well devoid of much that's interesting. It's, it's, it's very plain. I mean, it starts getting interesting once you put all the, um, the bogies and the wheels on and then cover this deck with torpedoes and a, a small bridge area here and we've got hatches and a ventilator shaft and everything. That's when it starts to come alive. And of course, you'll have your um, your props, the screw props coming out the back here, which um, hopefully they still tilt up and down like they did in the other kit. That'd be nice. Now, I keep referring to this car me, so I thought I'd show you that kit. And it's essentially, was well, not a schlepper so much. It's an amphibious tank, or like floating with floating pontoon. Yeah, basically, you, you've got a uh, you've got a tank with pontoons on. Because if you have a look at the side of the box, it's sort of it's quite evident. Here's your tank, all right. So that's a type two tank, I suppose. Alan would know. And then just got a pontoon at the bank and a pontoon at the front. <laughs> and I suppose once you get to the land, you can ditch those, and then you're a fully operational tank which is terrific. 
So because of that, the Kami only uses one set of track links. As opposed to Katsu, the track links are going all the way from there and all the way to here and all the way back again. So this is sort of more efficient, but it doesn't have torpedoes. So, you know, yes, yeah, so it's, it's still interesting. Very interesting. I mean, these sort of things are, are quite ingenious, aren't they? Yeah, there we go. All right. Now, what's of interest to me is what's changed in the kit. And I'm really not going to go back over the same ground I did last time. Otherwise, this will just be another big, long, drawn out, waffly video. But I'm interested in this. I'm interested in these. Um, look at them. They're completely molded as tubes. So none of that you have to glue two parts together. And you've got the bloody big long seam line to worry about. They should go together beautifully. In fact, we might do a little dry fit of those before I finish here today. All the brackets, as I said, the brackets sit on the deck. You've got all the screws and they, they go different ways. They're counter, counter rotating or contra rotating. Otherwise, the torpedo would go in a circle. <laughs> it would talk talk steer around in a circle so one one prop goes one way and one prop goes the other way to push it forward to um counter it talk there you go yeah don't understand what i'm saying can i get yourself a book on physics you can, you can figure that out those um yeah those machine guns are nice they are nice all right well that all looks good and i'll do a bit of a dry fit and we'll see what those torpedoes look like so i think they'll just basically cut off the sprue and click together it looks terrific you've got two sets of flags and we didn't have that last time, we only had one. So we'll have to see where that's indicated. The photo etch is the same, but they supply another one. So we'll have to see where that goes. Instructions, well, as per last time, the same things we don't use, because these sprues are all identical. Where it changes is the B and the C sprue, which is basically that one over there. And that is your machine guns, their... Um, tripod well cones that hold them in place the torpedoes and all the mounts for the torpedoes so let's have a look at that now when I uh, had a first had a quick look I found we have got the full camo scheme here in the uh, the paint guide so um that is terrific that is that is really good I, why they didn't put that on the box art, I don't know. It would have been so nice to see that on the box art because, I mean, that's what Rich has done. Now look at the Rich box. Okay, it's gorgeous. They, they show it off with the tricolour camo. There's a little white square there. That's where you actually put the Japanese flag if you want to. That's what I'm going to do. And, um, you know, you've got a soldier there who's operating one of the machine guns. That's, um, that's great. So it's showing it in the water but running on the tracks. You get an idea what the whole thing's about. The dragon's just gone with another green, boring, you know, box art. But oh well, okay. But anyhow, that's good that we've got that there. So it gives you a good idea how to paint it up, which is excellent. And, uh, you know, everything, what colours to make the torpedoes or the rest of it. It's handy and it looks pretty right. It looks, it looks pretty good. Now, the instructions are similar, but they've changed a few things to the previous kit. Obviously, we've now got torpedoes and machine guns, sure, but they've pushed a few things forward. Like, I don't remember these sections being pushed up into here. So they've crammed in, because I had to find it, looking everywhere, find out where the um, where the exhaust goes. And it's a slightly different, well, it is a slightly different part because they've added a B. Wherever there's a B and a C part, you know it's new and particular's kit, because the previous kit didn't have those sprues. So they've added the little dog leg in here, which you need with muffler, because the exhaust in the previous one will foul up with the racks for the torpedoes. So you've got to do that. And in the wretch kit, they give you two sets of exhausts. One that goes straight through if you're not putting the torpedoes on. But then if you want to put the torpedoes on, it will basically dog leg. So there you go. So they've added that little part there. Apart from that, everything else is the same, but they've shoved this assembly of it right here into the very beginning of instructions. This is new, the, um, the binoculars. They're actually made up out of lots of little parts. I don't know why. It's almost like an excuse to uh, give you more parts and to make you think you've, you've got something exciting to build. So that's new. And there's another little part here, another little B part. So those go onto the um, little bridge area. So they've added binoculars and they've added a little, whatever that is, blob. I don't know. So apart from that, everything else is identical. The, um, the same adjustable uh, 
screw props in their little mounting that's the same the same here which I believe is is to do with the filtration system that's the same so go back and watch my other video if you want to see all that in detail the same here with the wheels and the stupid little photo etch little rings which annoyed the heck out of me last time that's all the same but these build-ups here F I and H you, you, you they're there they weren't previously moving through yep assembly is pretty well identical and putting on the tracks is the same although I'm not going to use those horrible DS tracks in my last video I did say 20 centimeters or oh, well, 20 millimeter I wasn't sure it's a number 20 you need to cut 20 links off so there you are. everything else is the same so there's these parts are all the same unless you see a B or a C then you're in the new screw same same rudders go in so you know it's all down the previous year now here's this is where our new PE part goes in this thing here and it's really a rivet counting exercise well well maybe not because the torpedoes are there now this line which is actually a cable which is a metal cable you get in the kit right which runs the back here and I believe it probably steers steers the the boat come tank come schleppery thing right because obviously that goes up to the wheel housing here on the bridge so it's more than likely to do with steering the boat. Why that isn't internal, who knows? But that's on the deck. Anyhow, uh, previously it, it basically pivoted from that point there and went through, but that would foul with the new torpedoes that are on there. So they've given you a, another one of these little mountings, but it's photo etch. And they basically said scrape off the old one and then you run your wire this way. So that's all that's for. That's it. Absolutely. That's all it does. Nice little diagram here to show you how the wiring goes through and how it's supposed to fit around the stern. That's all in the last video as well, so I, if you really want to see all that, go and have a look at the last video so you can see what that's all about. So you can see here, this is the steering mechanism because there's your two rudders and then you've got a tiller arrangement and then your wires come in. So obviously that's how it all works and that is how you steer the boat. So all of this is pretty well the same as last time, seven. And even when you get to eight, that's that's basically it. Um, pretty well the same. Obviously, you've got a different, uh, you've got a different muffler and uh, basically exhaust pipe, but um, that's fine. That's all handled in F, as I said before. And you've now got binoculars on top of your bridge, which you didn't have before. And all the rest of it's pretty well the same. Although I don't remember this E9 part going in there. But that could just be me. It's an optional part, so that might be new. But why they would change that, I don't know. Maybe I just didn't notice it last time. E4, E9. Don't know. We'll look into that. But I think basically we had all the parts last time and there was very little you didn't use. Now this is where it all gets new and different. Once you get to part 9 here. And in part 9 we are building up our torpedoes. Now they are, they are rather nice and they come off the sprue fairly easily and they click together nicely. And because they are an entire tube you don't really have a seam to clean up. But now there is a seam line on one side of this torpedo. So I've matched that, I've rotated that, matched it up. Now good points, uh, the fins are very nice. Very, very, very nicely detailed there. The screws, they are good. Oh, we've we've lost some. They've fallen off here while I'm chatting away. Here they are, because things are just dry fitted. Things are just dry fitted here. So pop that on. So, um, you can get your contra retracting screws there. The instructions sort of indicate that they should match up and line up, but that is not my understanding of how these screws usually work or how I usually see them. They're usually staggered so that they um, basically X over each other. Now, um, these are not glued on because obviously I'm going to need to paint these later. This is my liquid tape and a lot of people ask me about this I've shown it in many videos but because people keep asking I will talk about it again micro liquid tape right is a contact adhesive but unlike other contact adhesives right you put it on both parts separately you let the glue dry separately and then you click them together the thing is you can keep oops, you can keep taking it apart and putting it together again and again like a lot of contact adhesives, once it's on, it's on, that's it. So when you put soles on your shoes, it's the whole idea of contact adhesives, it's really good. But this one, it basically just gives you a sticky surface. And when you are ready to glue later on, 
you can just clean that off with a bit of water and a bit of Windex or a bit of alcohol. Probably take it off. Easy as that. Now the reason I do that is, well, I want to paint these brass. So I'd rather take them off the model and airbrush them up the colour that I want. And the rest of the parts there were all friction fit. So that's quite good. Now one disappointing part about the torpedo, and I don't know what's going on here. If you have a look at the, the rich torpedo, now notice something different. The rich torpedo, well again it has a seam line here and a seam line here, but it also has another one and it has these little circles cut out and it's just got a bit more detail. So I'll need to do some research there. Admittedly the rich torpedo was in two halves and you had to glue together so you know you had a horrible seam lines to fill. But um, I like that detail on top of the rich torpedo so I'll do some research. Also it's got a nipple. <laughs> so we don't get that on the dragon torpedo. The, um, the dragon torpedo is, is nippleless. There she is. She's been castrated. So there you go. And there's devoid of any detail whatsoever on the body. It's just smooth. Right? Smooth as a suppository. Yep. So that's um, interesting. But no big deal. You could certainly um, create your own detail. You could certainly scribe that on there. You could scribe the extra seam line there and what have you. So I don't know if there's different types. I mean I know the Japanese had more than one type of torpedo they used so maybe they're different types but then why would Rich use this one and Dragons basically use another one. Don't know. Need to look into that. Also in step 9 now, the new step, we're building up the machine guns and, and they go together fairly easily and they're, um, they're quite nicely detailed. There's no problem there at all. One thing to watch out for though is the um, the base which is going to fit into the body which or um, well, the, the deck and you are going to have to um, draw some holes so yeah they're indicating there draw some holes and I had a look and the deck actually has those under underneath already pre-marked for you um, same with the rails and whether that was the case in the last model whether they'd already you know, decided they'd make the two they'd make one with torpedoes and one without I mean why would you bother you might as well give give a person the kit with the torpedoes. Who's going to build it without? Goodness me. Um, so um, yeah, you've just got some holes to drill on the deck there before you basically uh, move on to step 12 and it all goes together. So because that goes in the deck with two, it's not going to rotate. So a decision would be, well, if you're going to glue it in place, You'll have to decide what angle you want everything. Same with the um, machine gun, it sort of friction fits, but it does friction fit into the base. So you could not glue that bit and not glue there. And if you want to, if you want to play with your toy, yeah. But there's nothing wrong with um, that MG. I think they're 127 millimeter, the Japanese ones. Yeah, I think so. It looks pretty good. I'd have to research and look at some pics. I remember rightly they had more coils, sort of they have a whole coil mechanism on there which doesn't seem to be evident. I'd have to compare it to the rich one and I'll have a look at that later. But it's, it's a nice MG and there's nothing wrong with that. So that goes together well. Part 10 is merely mounting your torpedo to the deck clamps and those are nicely moulded. I didn't make them up but they're all on your new sprue obviously and uh, your brackets and then you've got little um, little fold over pieces here, holding place. That all looks very nice, very nice indeed. Now one thing that is new that they'll talk about a little further on are these here, these little stanchions. Because the previous model was just flush on the side of the hull. Whereas this one needs these stanchions which extend the hull out very much as you'd have like with deck guns that have little platforms that extend out over the side of the hull, same sort of thing. That's so that these brackets, and you've got two aside, can um, be mounted somewhere and hold your torpedo in. So yeah, so that's that's something new. So that's a very nice bit of engineering there, and I don't see any problem with that going together fairly quickly and fairly easily. And of course you've got your rear rails as well, which is where they put the spare torpedoes. A couple of rails there at the rear, and that I believe is for your spare torpedoes. So it's, it's coming together you know, pretty quickly, pretty easily. There's your bridge and you've built that up way back at the beginning this time. And then here you're getting a one-to-one -one scale, well one-to-one -to, -one to the model, of 
how you're going to get these little stanchions in and how they then connect to the brackets. Also gives you a nice shot of the MG, which I needed because there's a tiny little part here for the MG, tiny little fiddly part, and I could not for the life of me in these instructions figure out what the heck that was and how it fits in there. So um, oh, just my eyes are not that good. But luckily when you go to the this diagram here, because it's at the same scale, or same size as the model, I managed to figure out at least where it goes and how it fits in. I still don't know what it is. Anybody knows what that is? Let me know. I don't know much about guns, really. No. Okay, and, and that's it, essentially. After that, you come to the, as I said, the very nice camo scheme, which uh, it's best seen in colour, which is what Rich did. So that's kind of what she's going to look like. So there you have it. That is my comparison. Now, which one's better? Well, they're different scales, so it's really apples and oranges. But in some ways, the Rich Kit is more detailed. The Rich Kit actually has photo etched straps to hold the port torpedo on. The detail of the cabin is about identical. Your um, bogies and everything identical. Your track links, well, at least you get link and length tracks on this kit. It's 170 second scale. They're a bit fiddly to put on, mind you, but they're very good. Whereas you're getting those horrible Dragon DS. But I've managed to get around that by purloining some um, metal track links. Machine guns, torpedoes, all the rest of it. Yep, look, quite frankly, you're going to pay 10 to 12 shekels for the Dragon Kit. You're going to pay 2 to 3 shekels for the Rich Kit. Maybe a bit more now. But even at half the price, you're getting just as much fun and it's a great kit to build. So it's up to you, really. If you just want to do something that's indicative of the subject, buy the Rich Kit. Save yourself half the money. And you'll actually get link and length traps, which is good. But if you, like me, would like to build it in 135th scale, because you're blind as a bat, <laughs> then the Dragon Kit is for you. And it's, there's nothing really wrong with it. It's, it's a nice kit, nice parts. And I'll have a lot of fun painting that camo. So I look forward to that probably in the new year. So um, that'll be one that I'll just paint. This this will take me five minutes to build. There's not much to it. Schleppers im easy. <laughs> All right. Well, this video has probably gone on longer than I thought. I thought it was just going to be a little quick video because I'd just be showing the difference in parts. But um, there was quite a lot to look at, quite a lot to explore. If you want to see the full review of all the other parts, then there's a link at the end of this, and uh, it'll be in the screen, and I'll also put in the description of the full Katsu, the previous release by Dragon, um, review. And I go on about a whole lot of things. So, um, yeah. Make yourself a big cup of tea and sit back and relax to enjoy that one. All right, thank you to my Patreon supporters. I often forget to say that. You guys keep me going. And you may have noticed there hasn't been a lot of videos this month. I had so much work after all the lockdown restrictions were released here in Australia. And boom, everybody sort of wanted to get their business up and running. So I got tons of requests to do advertising. And I have been worked off my proverbial bottom. But I still managed to get out. This will be probably the third video for this month. And I might be able to sneak another one in the next couple of days. Just sneak it in the end of the month. And at least I've got four for the month. But um, if you haven't yet looked at Patreon, do. Go there and have a look. For as little as a dollar a month, you'll get to see all my videos early. Not only that, you get to see them ad-free for the first 24 hours. So it's kind of worth it. dollar a month. What can you get for a dollar a month? Nothing! <laughs> but you can get Harry Houdini a little bit earlier and unadvertised. All right, that's it. That's enough. So that is the cat suit. We are done. We are finished. I'm going to go make a curry. All right. So it's goodbye from Australia, and it's hooray from Harry Houdini. <laughs>